Radio Kerry. A Ballybunion caller, delighted to hear Kite Surfer is fine. It was some achievement to make it safely to County Clare. Indeed it was, and we will um, uh, uh, talk about that. And another listener getting in touch. Jory, can you please say a big massive thank you to everyone who took part in the search for my friend, my dear friend last night in Ballybunion, Gardaí, Coast Guard, the Fire Brigade, the LE Neve Rescue Helicopter Volunteers and friends. Thanks to everyone, says the listener. And to that, we're going um, to next on the programme. We have got Jackie Murphy, who uh, PRO with Phoenix or an ally with us on the line, and Phoenix along with Kill Rush or an ally were involved in that major multi agency search and rescue operation last night for a surfer who went missing, a kite surfer who went missing at sea for seven hours. Um, uh, Jackie, good morning to you. Good morning, Jerry. Uh, now, was this person kite surfing or windsurfing, or what exactly was it? How, what, 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 when did you get the alarm? When was it raised? Yes, Jerry. I think there's, um, just to clarify, that the gentleman was a windsurfer. A windsurfer, not a, a kite surfer. surfer. Yes, okay. that's right. And um, at approximately 5.34 p.m. yesterday, Sunday the 11th of November, the RNLI and Phoenix were requested uh, to assist the Coast Guard in uh, what was at the time a search operation. And it was approximately off the coast of Ballybunion, where the gentleman had been last seen at approximately 4 p.m. So um, the Coast Guard, the Phoenix RNLI, launched at 5.34 p.m. yesterday. And we launched the all-weather lifeboat, which is our large lifeboat, with, I think, we had a crew of six on board. And they went. They were at the scene quite quickly, which was good. Uh, while they were en route to the scene, Jerry, uh, the Ellie Neve happened to be on, on doing their work out there. So both um, rescue teams mis- met together, and um, the guys all and, and the girls commenced a search immediately, a very thorough and comprehensive search, and very well. It was um, coordinated and collaborated very well. I was in the station at the time of it. And there was an awful lot of communication between all of the um, agencies involved, including Shannon Coast Guard as well, Rescue 115. OK, so a lot of operations there. The LE Nia was in the area as well. And I know the inshore life boat from Kilrush Ornelai was involved too. Now, what were the weather conditions like at the time, Jack? They were quite severe, Jerry. really, to be honest with you. Um, as you know, the sea is relentless. It can start off very calm, what seems a very normal day out. And um, certainly at that time, it was obviously pitch black, although visibility was very good for the Coast Guard. They did say with their beams as well that that, that helped, you know, while, during the operation. And um, but it was the, the, the sea was very rough and the wind, the gales were, you know, was quite strong, actually. So it would have been quite difficult for the gentleman involved as well. I can imagine uh, from that point of view. So the search went on um, uh, until around 11 o'clock last night. That's right, Jerry. At approximately now, these details are quite sketchy in the sense until the the man, you know, himself is in a, is able to talk and everything like that. Um, but at approximately eleven o'clock, uh, the news came f- through that he had actually made his way to land in Kilkee, that um, which was approximately twenty five miles away from where he was surfing, and um, and it, it was absolutely amazing to be honest with you, you know that that he was. Able able to go safely. Now, he may be very experienced at everything, so until we get those details, Sherry, but yeah. it was against a strong tide as well, so um, it was absolutely, you know, amazing and miraculous, which is great, obviously, for everybody, you know. I, I You know, at, at that stage, now, he'd been in the water a long time, and, um, you know, people were, you know, the, the search was quite busy, well, very busy from a lot of agencies. Bally Bunyan, I think they're um, their units were on on the shore as well doing their search. So, like, there was a very big multi-agency approach, but great news broke at about 11 o'clock that he had been it, he had been found and that he had made his own way to to, to land, as far yeah. as we know, which As- is great. Astonishing. He t- set off in Ballybunion and 25 nautical miles in those sort of conditions around the Loop Head Peninsula all the way yeah. up to Kildee. It's, it, Kilkee. It's astonishing. It's, uh, I think it, it, people are very surprised but very relieved naturally and I think probably when they get to speak to the man later you know he will be able to explain how it all worked and everything like that it, I mean it's it's a, it, it's fascinating Jerry and uh, yeah. delightful of course absolutely delightful yeah. for it must have been, look, It must have been a, a very frightening experience I, I know you also uh, are taking the opportunities you always do to remind everyone to take and to see to always respect the water 
Yeah, I mean, Jerry, I, I, I'm sure it will come out, you know, when the man is speaking to us that, you know, he was well equipped and everything like that. So we look forward to hearing the actual details. But I suppose the key thing is that, you know, it is truly amazing that I saw the, the collaborative work of everybody, the volunteers of the RNLI, and as you know, they are volunteers. And uh, and I, I was actually, when I was in the room last night, listening to it all going on, I was saying, my God, these are the people that I would like to come out and look for me, you know. So to be fair, you yeah. know, it was very good. Mm-hmm. If you ever got into difficulty, one of the things, and for people who are going out, if you're going out on your own, um, or, or even if you aren't on your own, a personal locator beacon can be key. Yes, absolutely, Jerry. Again, you know, we don't know the true facts of that, but just for everybody to remind them always, you know, to tell people at what time they're expected home, um, to maybe have any contact devices as they possibly can, to be as equipped as they possibly can, because uh, within two minutes, like, the sea can turn on you, and that's the bottom line on it, really. But um, I suppose that what's very good, Jerry, is we would always encourage people, even if you have a doubt that somebody is missing or something has gone wrong, to contact contact the Coast Guard at 112 or the emergency services on 999 and ask for the Coast Guard. Yeah. But immediately, you know, you know, time is critical yeah. in, in all of these. Even five minutes or a couple of minutes makes a huge difference when yeah. you're at sea, as you know. And with that in mind, Jackie, as well, uh, and this is where the alarm came from, this person was reported as overdue. So telling yeah. somebody on shore, I'm going out, here's what I'm going to do, here's how long I'll be, if I'm not back at this time, make a phone call. Absolutely. I mean, we from what we know, Jerry, is that the last sighting of the gentleman was at approximately 4 p.m. and the alarm was raised at approximately 5.30. So, it, you know, that was good. At least, obviously, you know, somebody must have been aware or somebody was watching out for him as well. And um, naturally for his family and his, his wife and family were, and it was lovely there. I, I just we listened to uh, somebody ringing in to thank all, all the agencies involved and absolutely people appreciate that. But, you know, it, it's just never be afraid to contact people and always be prepared if you're going to see. Yeah, and um, Jackie, finally, look, this this is into the quieter time of year for you because less people obviously out there with the weather conditions. However, when you are called out, it is more dangerous this time of the year, isn't it? It, it? There's no doubt. I mean, I suppose the crew were highly trained, very experienced crew on board as well last night. They left Phoenix at approximately 5, we'll say 5.35 or 5.40, give or take, and they stayed, they returned back to the station at 1 a.m., so, you know, they're out for a long time as well, you know, and in, in dangerous terrain at the end of the day for all, you know, particularly when you're on the sea, it, it's highly dangerous. So, you know, but, you know, might be entering a quieter time, but just always never be afraid and be prepared is the main message. And we are extremely happy that there is this outcome this morning, I can assure yeah. you. Very, yeah. very happy. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's great stuff. Listen, um, Jackie, we'll leave it there, but thanks very much for talking to us on the programme this morning. And great, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Jackie Murphy there, press officer with the Finnish RNLI, um, who are out involved with Kilrush RNLI for that alarm that was raised yesterday. And it is one of those things, I guess, that, you know, sometimes things can go wrong. An astonishing story, though, on the face of it, and a very lucky, fortunate story. 25 nautical miles from Ballybunion around Loop Head, up into Kildee, Kilkee, weather conditions when they were out searching, three metre swells, force five or six. Um, it's just astonishing, astonishing really and, and everyone very, very thankful that it came to such a good end with regards to that and, and the warnings again from, and, and the, not the, the advice I should say, again from the RNLI, respect the water, always carry a means for calling for help such as a personal locator beacon, especially if you're on your own, um, always tell someone you are going out and what time you expect to be back for, make sure they know where you are, sailing where you're sailing to and who to call if you're not back on time.